Hello everyone! It's been a while, but this is going to be the next installment in my unofficial series of minimalist KSP challenges. The goal of this mission will be to make it from the surface of Kerbin to the surface of Moho and back with the lowest mass craft possible. The first thing I'm going to do here is to take advantage of a loophole that I myself built into the parameters of this challenge here by flying the craft I'm going to use over to the summit of one of the mountains to the west of the Kerbal Space Center before final takeoff from Kerbin. If you've watched some of the previous minimalist challenges I've done, you're going to notice that I've recycled a lot of the techniques used there. And I've also incorporated some techniques that I've seen other Kerbal knots using. Really, these minimalist challenges are all about making an efficient amalgamation of other techniques that have been used. Flying to a mountain summit before mission start is something I've done before. I used this in the ion-powered airplane to orbit video. In that video, I did this because I needed the altitude to make the Dawn engine actually have usable thrust. In this mission, I'm using the mountain takeoff because the single Juno engine on the craft has enough thrust to allow it to fly, but not enough to take off with. So there's an arm on the cargo plane I'm using here, and I'm going to use that to drop the craft we're going to be using off the side of a mountain for takeoff. Our craft that's going to take Bill Kerman to the surface of Moho and back is 2,038 kilograms at takeoff. As I pick up speed, this craft quickly gains the capacity for level flight, but I want to use as much descent as possible. Getting to a higher speed is going to turn my potential energy into kinetic energy, which is going to make the impulse of the jet engine more efficient. Now that we've leveled off and are picking up speed, let's take a closer look at the craft itself. If you watched the Minimalist Duna mission and the Minimalist Minimus mission, you'll notice that this looks really similar. And one of the common questions I got with those videos was how I reached such a high speed with just the Juno engine. It's all about eliminating air drag wherever possible. Almost all of the body drag on this is occluded through KSP's quirky fairing physics. The next step is to make sure that our fairing is pointed directly prograde. The wings look straight, but there's a couple degrees of angle of attack on there, which means that I can generate lift even when I'm pointed directly even with my motion. The second recycled trick here is burning off parts rather than decoupling them. When the second stage, the spark engine, is fired up, it burns off the lower stage, which just consists of the Juno engine and the air intake that goes with it. The next thing to burn off here is the wings. I'm using basic fins as wings here, and normally the low heat tolerance of these is a disadvantage, but I don't want them anymore. All they're doing is generating lift and drag that I don't want, and they're making me accelerate more mass, and burning them off helps everything. The Spark Engine has burned off all of our rocket fuel, and we're going to be coasting most of the rest of the way to space. Once we get to the very upper layer of the atmosphere, where air drag is going to be negligible, I pop off the fairing, and we're going to be using the Dawn Engine to get us the rest of the way into a circular orbit. I'm not going to detach the stage with the Spark Engine yet. This stage has, along with the spark engine and the empty rocket fuel tanks, also has a gas tank that I'm using for the Dawn engine. It also has four out of the six solar panel arrays attached to it. I'm not going to need those when we get to Moho, where solar panels generate more electrical power, but I do need them now to use the full thrust of the ion engine, which we need to be able to get into a circular orbit. Reaching a circular orbit with this craft is quite a struggle. If I just face prograde, we're going to reach the apoapsis as far before I reach a circular orbit. We're going to descend back in the atmosphere and we'll never reach orbit. The solution is to point the craft above prograde, giving a vertical component to our burn, which is going to give us more time to accelerate up to orbital speed. We do start descending, but as we get closer to orbital speed, our centripetal acceleration increases and the acceleration of the craft in the vertical direction eventually becomes positive and starts canceling out the descent. Not pointing prograde for the circularization burn does come with a serious efficiency loss in the form of cosine losses. 
I found these losses psychologically painful during the long burn into a circular orbit. But the ion engine is so much more efficient than the chemical rocket engine that as long as we can still reach orbit, I want to do as much of the change of velocity with the ion engine as possible. We are now in a circular orbit of Kerbin. I've got five and a half kilograms of ion fuel left in the spark stage that I'm now just using as a extra fuel tank. So we're going to use that first and start the process of ejecting from Kerbin. And after detaching the spark stage, I'm going to be burning my way up to an elliptical orbit of Kerbin, one battery charge at a time. The geometry of this ejection means that for our final ejection from Kerbin, we're going to reach periapsis at nighttime. Since our engine is solar powered, this is going to require a bit of trickery. I'm going to use the battery to do as much of the burn as possible at periapsis where the Oberth effect is the greatest. I'm then going to wait until we've reached daytime and I'm going to do the rest of the burn at partial power using solar power. There are definitely some more losses in terms of delta V here, but I've minimized these by minimizing the final ejection burn through our first gravity assist we're going to use here, which is an assist off of the moon. The delta V savings from a moon or assist are not that massive, around 100 meters per second. The big value from this is that it subtracts this from the final ejection burn from Kerbin that has to be done at one time. This design was barely capable of doing this final ejection burn as it was with the 100 meters per second subtracted. If I had had to do 100 meters per second more in this burn, it would have had required a complete redesign of what I was doing here. The Mooner Assist has given us a transfer orbit to EVE. The end goal is to do a gravity assist off of EVE that'll get us to MOHO. While gravity assists are the ultimate free lunch, how much you can do with them is limited by your relative velocity to the planet or moon that you're doing the assist off of. Right now, our relative velocity to EVE isn't high enough. So this first assist off of EVE is going to put us back on course to Kerbin, where we're going to do one assist off of Kerbin that's going to give us a second assist off of EVE where we now have enough relative velocity to get us all the way to MOHO. The insertion maneuver into a stable MOHO orbit is going to be a bit of a challenge here. First off, while I did my best during the gravity assist phase to reduce this, any approach velocity of MOHO is really high due to its proximity to the sun. Next problem is, for the second time this mission, we're going to be doing a maneuver where we're going to reach periapsis at nighttime where I can't use the Dawn engine. So I'm going to split the injection burn into two parts, each of which are going to be far enough away from the periapsis that we're going to be during the daytime when we get there. This again will result in some delta V losses, but the huge efficiency gain from the extreme specific impulse of the ion engine is more than enough to overlook these. Now that we are captured in orbit of MOHO, we just need a fairly standard set of retro burns to get down to a low MOHO orbit. However, there is one trick we can use here to gain some efficiency. We've burned off all of the gas in one of our two tanks. Now the empty tank is just dead mass that we're wasting impulse to accelerate. Finally, all those years of unnecessarily close passes can finally be put to practical use. Now with our extreme weight reduction complete, we can finish the rest of the maneuvers down to low MOHO orbit. Despite all the strangeness in the mission, the final descent from low MOHO orbit to the surface is not going to be that unusual. If you've seen my videos in the past, this will look pretty familiar. However, it was really important to get this one right. My thrust isn't that much greater than my weight on MOHO here. So it's really important that I control my vertical speed and keep this as close to horizontal as possible. There's also a jagged ridge line right before the mountain I want to land on. And it was really important that I, one, clear the ridge, we don't want to crash into it, but also stay as close to it as possible so I don't have to do any significant descent once passing over it. For the final approach, the goal is to come in as horizontal and as close to the ground as possible.
On the surface of Moho, we gave Bill his necessary cardio before the long trip back. And then even more unnecessary cardio, pushing the craft up to the absolute summit of the mountain. This will at least give us a couple meters of extra altitude for the reorbiting of Moho. Now our fuel levels at this point look quite low, and they are. We're going to have a lot less delta V for the return trip than we had for the trip out to Moho. Luckily, we don't need anywhere near as much. Braking on Moho, we didn't have any aero braking available to us, uh, but we will when we get back to Kerbin. So all we got to worry about is first getting to orbit a Moho, and then ejecting onto a transfer orbit to Eve. And once we've done that, we can use gravity assist to get the rest of the way home, and all our delta V usages after that are going to be negligible. Our gravity assist route to get back to Kerbin is going to be a reversed version of what we did to get to Moho. I'm going to be doing two assists off of Eve, with one assist of Kerbin in between those, before our final return to Kerbin. Our injection maneuver into captured Kerbin orbit is going to be a combination of aero braking, the very last of the ion fuel, and use of the EVA pack. I can now aero brake down to a low Kerbin orbit. Hopefully at this point you guys are concerned about how we're going to get Bill back down safely to the surface of Kerbin. I had tried this in the past to deorbit a Kerbal on EVA safely and couldn't get it done due to the overheating and decided it wasn't possible. However, some other people showed me recently that the trick is having the Kerbal head down and reverse, and that seems to give us just the right combination of drag and resistance to overheating. During the descent, I'm going to drain out the rest of the EVA pack. Most of it I use to slow down in the horizontal direction, but I do a little bit of a vertical component as well to help control our descent. We have left Bill out in the wilderness on this one. He'll just have to play both sides of blindfold chess until help arrives. And that will conclude our minimalist mission to Moho. These minimalist missions are always fun to do. There's a really wide space of potential techniques that can be used. I'm definitely going to do some more in the future. I just need a destination. Thank you everyone very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.